Screening for Hypertension How to Best Measure Blood Pressure 5 Steps Even if you live in a low, middle, or high resource setting, blood pressure screening must consistently involve the best approach, which is a standardized approach to pre-measurement preparation, patient position, appropriate cuff selection, and placement. Step 1. The first step in measuring blood pressure is selecting a validated, semi-automated, or ideally a fully automated device. Working groups recommend the use of automated blood pressure devices that have been independently validated and use an upper arm cuff whenever possible. Devices that have passed international standards can be found at this website. With a semi-automatic device, you must squeeze the bulb on the blood pressure cuff. The device will do the cuff deflation and assessment of the blood pressure reading. These devices need to be purchased along with different cuff sizes. Fully automatic devices are easier to use, and unlike semi-automated devices, they will self-inflate. Some also have a rigid cuff that accounts for differences in arm sizes. However, these devices are more expensive. Regardless of the device chosen, all devices will eventually wear out. Cuffs designed for personal use or self-measurement are especially prone to wearing out. Step 2. The next step is choosing the right cuff size for the person being screened. Most cuff sizes come in small, medium, and large. Select the size you believe is most appropriate. There are markers on each cuff to help guide you. When wrapping a cuff around a person's arm, if the outside edge falls outside the markers, you have the wrong sized cuff. If a person's arm looks like it falls in between two cuff sizes, use a larger cuff. Step 3. The next step is to ensure the person is prepared for having their blood pressure measured. But watch out. Sometimes people can come to screening programs suffering from pain, anxiety, or stress. Pain, anxiety, or stress elevate blood pressure. If the blood pressure readings are found to be high, blood pressure screening should be repeated later. The person should not smoke in the screening location. Blood pressure increases for a short time after smoking, chewing tobacco, or consuming foods or drinks containing caffeine, such as coffee or tea. The blood pressure usually comes back down again in about 30 minutes. The patient should be resting comfortably in a sitting position for 5 minutes immediately before the measurement without talking. A person needs to be in a comfortable environment that is not too hot or too cold or too stimulating. The person should be seated with back support. The arm should be bare and supported with the blood pressure cuff at the level of the heart. You can use a pillow or a cushion to support the arm on the table to ensure that the arm is at the heart level. The legs should not be crossed. If the back and arm are not supported properly, if the arm is too low or the legs are crossed, the blood pressure will increase and you will get incorrect readings. Measure blood pressure on a bare arm or through a shirt with a thin sleeve. Place the blood pressure cuff on the arm with the artery marking on the inside of the arm over the brachial artery, then wrap the cuff. The cuff should not be too tight or too loose. A couple of fingers should be able to fit snugly under the cuff. Support the arm so that the middle of the cuff is at the heart level. Step 4. Now you are ready to measure the person's blood pressure. If you are using an automatic device, turn the device on and push the button and wait for the blood pressure reading to appear. If you are using a semi-automatic device, rapidly inflate the cuff with the bulb, making sure to inflate beyond the level where you can no longer feel the pulse. 
The pulse can be felt just above the thumb in the radial artery, which is a branch of the brachial artery. As the cuff inflates above the pressure of the brachial artery, you will lose the pulse. When you lose a pulse, inflate an extra 30 millimeters of mercury. After you have inflated an extra 30 millimeters of mercury above the point where you lost the pulse, you can stop inflating the cuff. The person should sit quietly while the reading is in progress. There should be no talking during the measurement. Write down the measurement. Now switch arms. Write down the measurement in the other arm. Blood pressure should ideally be measured in both arms on at least one visit, and if one arm has a consistently higher pressure, the arm with the higher readings should be subsequently used for blood pressure measurement and interpretation. Once you know which arm has the higher blood pressure, take a second measurement from that same arm and record that reading as well. Then take a third reading. Remember to write down all your measurements so that you won't forget them. Be sure not to round any of the numbers. In total, you will have measured the person's blood pressure four times, once in each arm, and three times on the arm with the higher readings. Step five. Now that you have finished measuring the person's blood pressure, be sure to write down all the information you've collected. Record the blood pressure. Do not round any of the numbers. At least three measurements should have been taken in the same arm with the patient in the same position. The first reading should be discarded, and the second and third readings should be averaged. Record the arm used, the cuff size, and the heart rate. Record the date, age, gender, and the use of any antihypertensive drugs. Now that you've reviewed this video, let's summarize the steps involved in best measuring blood pressure. Five steps to best measure blood pressure. Step one, select a validated automated device. Visit this website for devices that have passed international standards. Step two, select the right cuff size. Most of the time, you'll be choosing between small, medium, and large cuffs. When wrapping the cuff around a person, you must use the markers on the cuff to help you decide if the cuff is a good fit. Step three, prepare the person for blood pressure measurement. Take into account people who are anxious, stressed, or in pain, as their blood pressure will be falsely high. The person should not smoke in the screening location. The person should be sitting comfortably in a comfortable environment. Their back should be supported and their legs should not be crossed. The arm should be bare and supported with a blood pressure cuff at the level of the heart. The artery marking on the cuff should be placed on the inside of the arm in alignment with the brachial artery. The cuff should be wrapped so that it is not too tight and not too loose but with just enough space to slide two fingers underneath it. Step four, measure the blood pressure. There should be no talking while the blood pressure is being measured. You will need to inflate the cuff by squeezing the bulb on the semi-automated devices. Be sure to inflate an extra 30 millimeters of mercury above the level where you can no longer feel the pulse. Remember that you will need to ideally take a total of four measurements, one in each arm, and three in the arm with the highest pressures. Make sure to write down the numbers each time so you don't forget them. Do not round any of the numbers. Step five, record your results. Record the average reading based on the second and third measurements from the arm with the highest blood pressure readings. Record the arm, cuff size, heart rate, age, gender, and use of any antihypertensive drugs. These five steps sum up how to best measure a person's blood pressure. Congratulations! Now you're ready to measure a person's blood pressure. For more information, visit www.worldhypertensionleague.org.